Hey everybody, this is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be a reaction to another of many disappointing series of late for the Phillies in the last 10 or some years in Colorado as they still have not won a series in Colorado since 2012 after another disappointing series. Only one good game in this series. The first game, the Phillies unfortunately lost 5-4 to four <clears throat> in that ball game. In that ball game for the Phillies, um, for the Phillies, there we go, that loaded. Vince Velasquez, of course, only went four innings. He looked all right to start in the first um, couple innings there, and then in the fourth, all of a sudden, gave up those two home runs that just ended up tying up the game to Trevor Story, which was really a pitch that Story that rode in on him, swung at and hit really well, but then left one right over a meatball to C.J. Crone. So Vinny was... All right. I mean, you know from watching videos on my channel, people that have seen them, I don't usually be not, I've said I'm tired of seeing him as a starter. I don't think he's a starter anymore. Maybe he can do something as a pen. This game still kind of showed that because he dwindled off and uh, you could see tiring again in the fourth inning. This dude just doesn't seem like a starter, but at least he did all right and kept the Phillies in the game. He most certainly was not the reason why they lost because... After uh, he allowed the tie, they got the lead where Andrew McCutcheon, who's been struggling, was able to get a sack fly that scored Quinn um, when Quinn was actually able to get on base for once. So that was a positive as well. And then you obviously have Reese Hoskins, who's been doing well, uh, was able to homer in that game. But then off of Sam Coonrod, Ryan McMahon, who's been good this year, really good, um, was able to single and um, bring in Sam Hilliard. And then in the next inning... Um, when the Phillies still had the lead, Garrett Hampson hit a home run off of Sam Coonrod in his first off game of the season. Otherwise, he's been brilliant. Well, it was just a bad game to pick. The Phillies have struggled on the road mightily in recent years, and they struggled in Coors Field since 2012. They've been abysmal in Coors Field. And this is just not where you want to see them blow it, so they blow the lead. And then, of course, Hector Neeris leaves a splitter up, whether the um, bat batting average percentage for um the analytics that was 190 or not there's no way it was that low it shouldn't have been that low that sometimes i think that stats overrated because that was a hanging splitter you want to get that down in the zone and he failed and uh, ron maltapia wants to get it up in the stratosphere like i said in the preview for this game um that i did the special preview for this game you can get it out in course field and that is exactly what happened in that game so that was a bad um, performance from the Phillies uh, bullpen in that game to not be able to keep them in. If Vinny Velo did all right, you would have liked to see a starter go at least uh, five innings, but for a guy that doesn't really start anymore to go into the fourth and only give up two, albeit one on an absolute meatball to C.J. Crone, he did not do too bad, where uh, Herman Marquez in that game went six and gave up two at eight strikeouts and three walks, um, where the big thing for the Phils in that game, again, team with runners in scoring position, was 0 for 10 and left 8 people on base. They just could not um, get it done yet again with runners in scoring position. And that's just big uh, for the Phillies all season, and that's what continued to hurt them in that game. Then, of course, um, we're actually saved the best game for last, so we can actually talk about something good at the end of this one, they got absolutely destroyed today. This was actually the first game, like I said in the preview to this game, Anderson got pulled after four because of a seven-inning game, and then because um, you wanted Joe Girardi, wanted to get offensive scene when he pinched hit Brad Miller in that one game, but it did not work. This is the first game he looked bad. After the third inning, uh, he just could not figure it out at that point. And just got lit up in the fourth inning. Uh, Fuentes hit the sack fly to Moniak that scored McMahon. Then John Gray, of course, was able to single. The pitcher, of course, was going to be the guy to tie it up. Of course, that happens to the Phillies. They've been struggling so much on the road. That just seems like something. Once you're struggling, stuff like that, crap like that happens to you. The pitcher of all people ties it up. Then Ramo Tapia, who seems like he's becoming a new Phillies killer, um, was able to single which then gives them the lead. And then Trevor Story caps it off, had a home run in the first game, hit a grand salami, topped it off there um, in this game, hitting a grand salami off of David Hale, who looked good in his last outing and the outing before and looked equally as bad in this outing. He's a guy that you're probably going to get that out of. He's more of just a, like average at best bullpen guy, like a long reliever guyer. 
But um, he looked all right for two, then sucked in his other two performances. I believe that was his fourth outing, if not maybe fifth. But uh, he's looked good for a couple and sucked in others. I think that's what you just got to expect from him as he gives up that grand slam to Trevor Story. Um, what was unfortunate in this game is Spencer Howard struggled mightily, giving up the triple to Dom Nunez, which then uh, Tapia, of all people, again, was able to get an RBI by grounding out to score him. And then in the very next inning, he gave up a single <clears throat> to Jonathan Diaz, which scored Ryan McMahon in that inning. And then in the eighth inning, um, in the eighth inning, the Phillies had a uh, falter pitching at that point. Uh, Bailey Falter making his major league debut. So at that point, I don't even uh, necessarily count that. He pitched two innings and allowed two earned runs. He was just in at that point because Joe Girardi... Um, basically knew the Phillies were going to lose, so he was just putting in a guy from the minors where Chrome was able to hit a home run off of him, but he's a guy that's not even ready to pitch in the majors yet, and if he will make it, uh, we'll have to see as a guy that's able to pitch in the majors, so I don't really blame that guy for that, but it was unfortunate to see Spencer Howard really struggle mightily in this game. After coming in and having good bullpen outing last game, it was definitely very um, off-putting to see that where maybe he just needs to get a defined role. Some guys need that. I do agree with Jim Salisbury and Philly Sorto. He kind of said pitching is just pitching. If you can, it, it, you should be able to figure it out. If you're coming out of the pen and it seems like that's where your team needs the most help, you should be able to figure that out. If you're starting, you should be able to figure that out. Vinny Velo hasn't been able to do it, but we've seen other guys that bounce back and forth around the league actually are able to do it um, with other teams. Uh, Taylor Male is a guy that did it in his career was a bullpen guy now is becoming a pretty solid starter. Corbin Burns, before he became one of the better starters right now to start the season, has pitched some out of the bullpen is now as a good starter. Uh, we've seen Lorenzo do it and also hit. Um, so there's different guys that do it to different success rates, but we see guys do it. I think he should be able to be consistent. It was unfortunate to see him struggle in this, but I still think he's going to be a good future pitcher struggling in cores. I'm not going to overreact to it, but it was just unfortunate to see him struggle in this. What I am going to react to in this is just how bad the team did again. Um, you were 0 for 4 and left 7 on base, but that's because you could barely generate anything in this game. You got out hit 16 to 7. It was absolutely terrible. The only guy that really did good was Bryce Harper. Um, he was able to hit two home runs. Uh, Mayton also did good again, I must say, because he went two for three. He continues to do good, and then Moniak got to hit the opposite field, so it was nice to see him hit an opposite field and run an opposite field hit in the same way. And it was nice to see Mick Mayton continue to hit, and Harper hit two home runs, one an absolute 468-foot bomb. Other than that, complete crap show of a game. The Phillies did absolutely terrible, and they don't deserve any praise um, realistically. Uh, for this, I mean, they won one game in this series, but you almost, from how the bullpen blew the first game, um, Vinny pitched good enough for you to be able to win that game. You went 0 for 10 with runners in scoring position. You were able to win the second game. Uh, the Philadelphia Phillies, or Phillies, were actually able to win the second game. In this, going 2 for 5 with runners in scoring position was actually decent, while leaving still 7 on base. Um, the Phillies were able to win this game because of Reese Hoskins. Uh, Reese Hoskins hit a homer in the third. That put them up 2-1. to one. And then later on in this game, when it was tied 4-4, to four, Reese Hoskins hit a homer in the top of the sixth. So if it wasn't for Reese Hoskins, um, which really helped on my fantasy team too, so I appreciate that, Reese, the Phillies would have lost this game too. Uh, Alec Bohm hit a sacrifice fly. It was good to see that to get another ribby for him. And then Didi kept hitting. We just need to see him feel more consistently at short, um, which was able to score Harper. But... This was really the Reese show. If it was not for Reese Hoskins in this series, Harper had a great day um, today. But if it was not for Reese Hoskins, um, Harper won one for four in the game on Saturday. This team would have potentially got swept in this series. So it was good that Reese Hoskins really stepped up on Saturday, was able to hit those two home runs. The one when it was evened up at four, especially to put the Phillies up and get the clutch hit of the day. They ended up winning seven to five. So that was the winning hit. So if it was not for Reese Hoskins, this could have been a real crap fest for the Phillies. But at least the Phillies were able to salvage the series on the second day, get one win. They're absolutely pitiful at Coors Field. The Rockies and splits are ridiculous. They do great on the road themselves and are an absolute crap storm on the or great at home, excuse me, themselves are actually the crap storm on the road. So uh, the Rockies obviously took advantage of their home ballpark and absolutely torched the Phillies. No excuse to get torched by a Rockies team with that, though. That doesn't score at a high rate anymore after getting rid of an Alonado. 12-2, to two, though, absolutely pitiful, inexcusable performance. They were able to win the second game of the series, but you almost don't even feel that great about that just because of how bad the bullpen blew game one. And then this 
last game was just something you want to forget and almost like wash your mouth out with soap. It was that bad. And then the second game, um, at least they were able to win and salvage the series. But that's all I got for this one. This is a reaction to the Phillies and Rockies series. Stay tuned for the preview to the Phillies and St. Louis Cardinals, where hopefully Andrew, if he's able to join, we'll have to see. I'm going to get a text back from him if he's going to join late tonight or if I'm just going to roll with that by myself. But everyone have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Hopefully the Phillies are able to prevail and perform better in St. Louis than they did in Colorado because they continue to just absolutely flat-out suck. Um in Colorado. So hopefully we'll see a better four game series is a key and at least get a split in St. Louis. So have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everyone. And thanks for joining Sports Fan News. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated. The subscriber goal right now is to get to 140. So please tell your friends and like, comment, and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. And have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everyone. Peace out.